I'd been on vacation and Pop's been busy on the elephant, our 437 Mopar Stroker build. We're going to get you caught up on what's been going on and start putting the pieces of the puzzle together. It all happens right now here on Mike's Motorworks. <laughs> Holy moly, does this look confusing. Now, if you're thinking, wait a minute, uh, wait a minute, guys, this is just way too bonkers for me. Well, yeah, again, this is, again, approaching from the hobbyist perspective, but you're getting a little bit more into the nitty gritty. If you're one of those engine building professionals, then this is stuff you probably already know to begin with. So what we have here is we have our dial indicator. And um, down here, uh, you can't see it on the screen because the angle I'm at, I'm going to show you here in just a few moments, but down here, uh, we already have the uh, push rods in place. And I say this because this doesn't use standard push rods. All right, let me show you exactly what's going on from a different angle. In place on our intake side is our push rod measuring tool right here. And what we're doing is we're showing the process that was taken to go ahead and measure the length of the push rods that were needed. Because when we got the push rods, they did not come as one size fits all. They had to be custom cut. Why? Because each engine is a little bit different. In other words, the engine builder didn't know which of the um, lift, not lifters, I'm sorry, the rocker arms we were using, which rocker arms, arm assembly, you know, and so, uh, you know, the, the valves, those had to be changed out, and we'll talk about that shortly. So what we've done is, uh, these have already been measured in cut, but we're gonna show you the process that we went through, or that dad went through, to measure this using this tool right here. This is our push rod measuring tool. Now, something to keep in mind, when you have a full custom assembly like this, okay, your push rods are going to be varied in length. In fact, your exhaust side is going to be different than your intake side. So you have to measure and then cut, okay? So in order to measure, okay, you actually do this on the engine itself. You actually place the measuring tool inside either your intake or your outtake, or your, I'm sorry, your intake or your exhaust, okay? You go ahead and snug it against your rocker arm assembly. We're gonna show you how this works here in just a moment. And then this is a screwed assembly, all right? So all you do is simply twist and turn left or right to adjust the overall length, right? And then what you're gonna do is, is once you have this figured out, well, the total length, okay? You're gonna put this and measure this hopefully using a micrometer to figure out the total length that you need. And then Pop went ahead and did that. And so he got his measurements that he needed, okay? And then once he got that measurement, he went ahead and you have the pictures here playing in front of you, went ahead and made sure that the ball was in the end and put it on the micrometer. Then made sure that the ball and rod assembly matched that overall length, okay? And um, made those cuts using his metal cutoff tool, okay? And he did that for each of the intake sides. Then he went back and measured the exhaust side and did that for each of the exhaust. Now, of course, the caveat being is you gotta make sure you know which one's the exhaust and which one is the intake when you're doing this, okay? And this happens to be uh, part number 7709 from Comp Cams. It's important to note that over here, you can see, I'm using my GoPro for this, these aren't the standard springs. These are just some springs that we're using to kind of keep this in place because we're going to be using our dial indicator. So we use these springs to measure our, take our measurements from cylinder number one. Now, obviously, the other ones are already in place. Essentially, what we do is to get the measurements, all right, you put the rocker arm assembly on, you got the, dumb, the, um, the springs over here, the springs weren't installed over here, right? And so um, you had to measure how much lift was actually occurring, all right? And we did that with the dial indicator. 
Now these rocker arms are adjustable up here and they have different uh, kinds of adjustments you could use. And that's for a future lashing or what have you. But when it's, we're doing is we're going ahead and set a zero lash on this individual uh, push rod measuring. Again, this push rod is different than the other ones, right? Because this is our measuring push rod. And you're going to do this in two different measurements. You're going to get it one measurement for your um, exhaust side and one for your intake side. Again, custom applications work a little differently. Additionally, you could see something a little bit different here. Notice the extreme angles that we're dealing with. All right, this guy right here on the exhaust side is a little bit more um, up and down, if you will, okay, from your perspective. But this one is kind of going at a different angle, right? There's a more extreme angle. And you can see how big the chambers are with these heads. And of course, that's necessitated, um, you know, for the, or necessitating the actual different angle or the change in the angle. So we're wanting to get as much lift as we can, right? So we are going to go ahead and go through the process of measuring as if we were measuring for this intake side right here. Now, this tool, as I showed you earlier, does twist on a screw, right? So we set that up where it's kind of flush and it's zero position, and we went ahead and set our dial indicator at the zero position. And the goal is, is to get as much lift as possible. Since Dad already measured this, we know the target is in the 680, 681, 682 range, right? Um, Dad, what were some of the numbers when you were first doing this? Uh, 678, 675 in that range. Okay, so when he was first doing this, right, he was getting 675, 678. Did it ever creep up over 681? 681 is the, well, 682, 681 is in the range. Okay, 681, 682 is the range you're looking for. The, the uh, cam itself is capable of 688. Ah, okay. And we were trying to get to that range, but I believe because of the angle of the push rod itself, it's keeping us below that 688. Okay, so if you didn't hear what he was saying, right, the, um, the cam itself is capable of pushing 688 with these 1.6 ratio rockers, right? So the most he's been able to see is that 688. 2681 range. Again, he suspects that that's the angle um, right here. So let's see exactly what that process is to see if we're, of course, in the right measurement. I know we are, but this is what you would be doing as you're kind of getting your measurement set aside. And we'll show you what Dad did once he found out what the measurement was. All right. So right now it's in its zero position. So all we're going to do is start spinning it. And you're going to see this gauge move really, really fast. Now, this gauge is older and kind of persnickety, right? And usually you would use this little gauge to count the uh, one, uh, the tens, right? And then you would use this to count the thousands. Unfortunately, because the gauge is a little bit persnickety, all right, that guy doesn't sit on the zero mark, right? And you're going to notice that the gauge goes down. Why does it go down? Because right now it's all the way in its up position, right? Simple engineering. If you're in an up position and you decrease elevation, it's going to show a negative number, right? So here you go, all right? We're going to go ahead and give it a couple of turns, right? And we're moving. Now, sometimes the valves will get not stuck, but the springs kind of stick in here because these are just super lightweight springs just for tuning purposes. That's all right. We're going to go ahead and just measure how many times it turns around and see where we're at. All right. So uh, we're coming up and approaching the lube itself. All right. Um, and then you can see that number start to turn here in just a minute. I think I'm fixing to mark that gauge. And there it goes. All right. So we're going to count it down. That's one, two, three, four, five, six, and here we go. Now remember, it's going backwards, so we're going to be aiming for the 20 mark over here, okay? Now we're at the 20 mark. It's beginning to peak out as we're going to over the uh, top. One and two. So there you go. 0.682 is where we're at. Again, you're going to have to do this multiple times to dial in your biggest lift. And just because you extend this doesn't mean you're going to get the most lift possible. Why? Because there's a steady balance. Okay. So you're going to have to uh, kind of find the right balance. Additionally, there might be some grinding required, and we're going to show you that shortly as well.